Hey, 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 I'm Alexandra Herbushka, founder of Life with Herpes, founder of alexandraherbushka.com, and founder of the Secret Society Wellness Products. I am excited to be live with you again. I'm sitting on my ear pod case. That doesn't feel good. Yay, I'm excited to be here with you. Hey there. Hey, my friends. Hey, Brooke. Hey, core mom. Let's see. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is just your opportunity to ask questions. It can be about herpes, it can be about life, it can be about marriage, it can be about being a mommy, it can be about breastfeeding, whatever you guys want. Um, you guys submitted a lot of your questions through the story, so I'll go ahead and start answering them there, but feel free to um, reach out and ask your questions directly. Okay, this is a good one. What if you don't get blisters during an outbreak? When should you test swab? Okay, so if you don't get blisters during an outbreak, um, that probably means you're asymptomatic. Typically, blisters are a symptom, um, which is awesome that you don't get blisters because most people, that's that's like the part that's frustrating for most of us. Um, I would say that um, it might be really hard for you to swab um, because if there is no blister, then you don't necessarily know where the outbreak is. Um, what may be happening is the podrum symptoms, like um, you may get like the like the creepy crawly or the the like um, stinging or like not stinging but like hot spot sensation or something like that that might be something that you get um, if that's the case then have them swab there but most likely you're gonna come back negative for that because there isn't an open blister the swab test is really what's great it works really well when you have an open blister um, so yeah that's what I recommend with that if you're going to get married and you test a positive for both one and two well, first of all, congratulations on getting married. That's super exciting. I'm excited for you and um, your fiance. I mean, so exciting, right? Like, that's the best, so congratulations. Um, as far as testing positive one or two, um, has your has your fiance been tested as well? Um, does he or she have it? Um, you know, chances are if you have it, they have at least one. Um, this could be something you've had forever and ever and you didn't know. You're probably asymptomatic if you didn't know. It didn't have any outbreaks. Um, but, it, it, you know, it shouldn't get in the way of your marriage. It doesn't get in the way of my marriage. Yeah, it happens. I get outbreaks from here, you know, time to time. But it doesn't affect the way my husband loves me or anything like that. So, um, don't worry about that. Congratulations. Yay. Yay, 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 yay. Hey, Autumn. Every person I've disclosed to you has been okay with it, with it making me realize it truly isn't a big deal. That's awesome, Brooke. Yeah, that's the thing is like, it requires an uncomfortable conversation up front, right? And then our ego pops up our ego pops up and is like, oh, but you shouldn't have told him and they're not going to like you and they're going to like, you know, all these little negative things. And um, a lot of times it's not that big of a deal, um, you know, so so just be confident in your disclosure and, you know, disclose when you're ready. That's nothing that comes up. Should I disclose, you know, before we go on a date or should I disclose on the date or should I disclose before we meet? disclose whenever you're ready you know i personally would say don't disclose until you know you're ready to sleep with that person that's something that i think is important that we can go on dates all the time and we may not want to sleep with that person so they don't need to know that information no need no need for that um but thanks brooke for sharing that hey Lindsay. hey ashley nicole okay can you get the same herpes too so I'm not quite sure what your question is. Can you get herpes twice maybe? Can you get the same strain or type twice? You can get the same type twice um, if you don't have the antibodies build up. So for example, when you're, there's, um, when people are first diagnosed with herpes, like let's say it's orally and they haven't um, built up the antibodies, they can spread it to themselves and other, body, other locations via open wounds or also genitally as well if they're um, not washing their hands and you know touching the, the genitals, vice versa. If you have genital herpes and touch your mouth, you don't have the antibodies, then yeah, you know, you might um, be able to transmit it to yourself. So I don't, I, that might be your question, I'm not sure. No, she's clear, just me. 
I don't mind. So she has negative results for HSV one and two. Um, I wouldn't sweat it. If, as long as your fiance knows and you guys have talked about it, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I'm so excited for you, by the way. Congratulations on getting married. It's so exciting. Do you think it's silly that herpes is something we have to disclose since it's so common? Yeah. Yes and no. It should just be like, this is just like part of life because people don't disclose oral herpes, right? Like if you have an oral outbreak and like share a beer, people don't disclose that. We should. Absolutely. It's contagious. Um, but we don't, you know, it absolutely should be disclosed. I just, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's ludicrous that we make this huge deal over something that is so common that most people have. Yeah, absolutely. Can herpes cause any life-threatening problems? No, um, not at all, at least at this point, based on the technology we have. Um, no, it doesn't cause any life-threatening problems other than an annoying blister here or there. That's it. So, um, I mean, for example, when you have HSV1, can you get it later on different body part, like a year later? If you have the antibodies, then it's really hard to reinfect yourself a year later. You could have infected yourself at the same time and it pop up a year later, um, but it's pretty hard to reinfect yourself with the same virus. So if that's your question. Uh, I'm lucky my beautiful girlfriend, she don't mind if I have herpes. That's great. That's part of a relationship, right? That's part of being in a committed relationship is you and your partner need to discuss certain life things, right? Like herpes, like um, there's other more important things you're going to discuss in a marriage, like um, finances, like buying a house, like credit card debt, like work, who works, do you both work, where do you spend your money, like having children. All these things are way bigger deals in a marriage, in a partnership, in a relationship than herpes. You have general H you have HSV2 generally, but I keep getting pimple-like bumps near my mouth. Should I see a doctor see if it's herpes? Yeah, Ashley, um, you might as well just to like clear the air and so that you know what it is. Most likely it's not herpes, um, especially if you can pop them it's um, or bear the pain to pop them. Um, it's probably not herpes. You know, if there's like pus that comes out, it's, it's, it's um, usually a pimple. But if it's something that's questioning you, then yeah, absolutely, go, go get it tested. Remember, herpes are blisters, not pimples. You know what I mean? Like pimples look different than blisters. It's not a black head or a white head. It is a blister. Oh, you're welcome. You have a nice day too. Um, they also can appear in like paper cut like things. Can you get irritated down there from bad order of wearing the same, a bad, from bad order by wearing the same underwear? Um, I would say the underwear shouldn't trigger an outbreak. Um, sometimes it, like, if it gets like caught, like there's times like, ooh, that caught me the wrong way. It wasn't, that wasn't, wasn't awesome. Um, but that also shouldn't cause an outbreak. So I would say no, most of the time, no. I have talked to women though that are like, hey, if I work out and wear like the yoga leggings or whatever, um, no worries, Adam you know, wear the yoga leggings and you're all hot and sweaty. I've, I have heard of people um, saying that it causes outbreaks, um, but I personally haven't experienced that. You had unprotected sex, uh, uh, the, the. you had unprotected sex with someone, but I told him I had herpes. I don't have an outbreak. Can he get it? Yeah. Um, you know, he can get it. Of course we can transmit it unknowingly, especially if we're having asymptomatic um, or like viral shedding. But, um, you know, that's, you have to remember it's his decision. And especially if you guys discussed it and he's okay with it, it was his decision to have sex. You know, my husband and I have unprotected sex. We do not have protected sex um, and he has not gotten it yet. So just because you had unprotected sex once doesn't mean that you're going to get it. If that makes sense. Hi Alexander, did you get infected for HSV1 and HSV2 at the same time? No, I got HSV1 when I was 20 and I got HSV2 when I was like 28. So completely different times, different times, different people. 
I don't get outbreaks and I'm currently taking the antiviral. What are my chances of passing it along to my partner? Um, the antiviral lowers your transmission rate by 48%. Um, so basically it lowers it down to less than 1% chance of transmitting it. So, um, you know, it's still possible to transmit it, but the antiviral is the best way to prevent transmission. Can I pop them? I can, oh, this back to the pimples on the lips. I can pop them, but after I pop them, they scab up. So I'm never sure if it's scabs or blisters or being a true scab. Yeah, if you're if you're wondering about it, Ashley, then go get it checked just so you know you have your peace of mind. It could be something else, you know, or you're, the doctor, the dermatologist could be like, oh, it's just this and this, use this face, face wash and it'll go away. Or like, oh, it's your lip liner that's causing it. Or I don't know, you know, like they come up with stuff. You're like, oh, I had no idea, right? Can you ever not have any blisters after your face first outbreak? Yeah, so you could be asymptomatic. Um, most people are asymptomatic, and some people will go years without getting another outbreak, which is awesome. Um, other people get them back to back to back. I would feel bad if he did get it, but I can't be hard on myself because I did tell him before. Yeah, don't be hard on yourself. It was his decision, okay? you can make decisions going forward that you can make differently. You could say, gosh, I don't feel comfortable with this. I know we did it once, but I don't feel comfortable with this. We're going to use a condom or I'm going to get on the antiviral or whatever, but don't beat yourself up about what happened in the past. You can't control that. Can I not give it to my partner? If I take the antiviral daily, you can still transmit it to your partner. If you take the antiviral daily, it is just going to lessen the the percent of transmission or like the the rate of transmission it's it's going to be the best way to protect your partner do you and your husband do anything in particular to prevent him from contracting herpes um we just communicate about it if i feel like i'm getting an outbreak or just had an outbreak or just not feeling totally comp like if i'm feeling run down or if i'm sick that's usually a trigger for an outbreak um travels usually trigger for an outbreak so i just talk to my husband and let him know and be like hey i'm like we just traveled today i usually wake up in the morning with one like kind of enter your own risk or and sometimes we're like yeah it's not worth the risk or sometimes we're like yeah it's worth the risk um, again, it's a conversation that we have and I leave it up to him when I'm in question. I would feel, okay. Um, cool. Had outbreak 11 years ago, nothing since. I don't know why, but got, it's gone. That's awesome that you're asymptomatic. Like awesome. Um, don't try and find, don't fix something that ain't broke. Can I have sex while I'm on Valtrex and with no symptoms with my partner who doesn't have it? Of course. You can have sex anytime you want. The issue is you may be at more risk at certain times than other. Obviously, if, an, if you have an active outbreak, you're at the highest risk of transmission. If you're on the antiviral, don't have an outbreak, your chance of transmission is extremely low. Extremely low. Would love to learn more about the Secret Society. Ooh, I love it. Okay, the Secret Society is an online community for people living with herpes. I created it when I was, well, when I created it because when I was first diagnosed, there was nothing out there that supported people living with herpes. Um, it is one of the scariest things to go through alone. So I wanted to create an online community. So that's what it is. It's it, We use Slack for our online platform. It's safe, it's secure. You can use any type of name you want, any type of photo image that you want. And uh, we do two weekly calls that are live. They're, they're on Zoom. And it's just a beautiful community of people that are hand holding and healing and overcoming, getting off the emotional roller coaster of a herpes diagnosis. So to join, you can um, go to the link in my bio and join the Secret Society. Scroll down, go to start here, scroll down to number four, which is join here. It is a monthly subscription. And um, yeah, it's great. Join. Also, with that being said, that reminds me of the Secret Society retreat that we're having in July. It's July 30th, 31st, and August 1st in Las Vegas. It's going to be so much fun. We have guest speakers coming out. We have a great lineup of speakers. Um, we have doctors. We have a chef, my husband, all sorts of fun stuff. So um, definitely, if you want to join the retreat, check it out. There's more information there. Um, does Beacon of Health Supplements help you lower the chance of transmitting herpes to a partner while kissing oral and regular sex. Yeah, absolutely. So 
Um, what Beacon of Health products are, what the, the supplements are, is they are immune boosting supplements as well as lysine. And lysine, there's been um, research on lysine that also helps uh, keep the herpes virus dormant in our system. When the herpes virus is dormant, it's unable to be transmitted. Doesn't mean that taking the supplements will prevent you, will prevent transmission. It just means that it supports keeping it dormant. So yeah, Beacon of Health supplements are, I mean, I helped create them. So they are a great, um, a great way to, I, I'm gun ho over them. So that's great. I'll link it for you guys in the replay if you want. If you stop taking Valtrex for four days, can I still be in your system? If you take it daily, I'm sure it's in your system. I don't know what the rate is of like your body burning it up and discarding it. I don't, I don't know, but I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's still in your system. Yeah. So the lysine pills, the lys so lysine is just a protein. So it's not necessarily a pill. It's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, a vitamin or a protein. It's not a drug also. I just want to make sure that you guys know that. I was just diagnosed with HSV2, never had an outbreak. I was told by my virologist, viral, virologist, there we go. I don't have herpes and cannot transmit it to my partner ever. Is this the first time you've had her, you've heard this? Yeah, that doesn't sound accurate. If you were diagnosed with HSV2, it is herpes. It's the herpes virus. Um, unless they said H HPV, and um, that's a different virus. Um, but it, you are, if you have herpes, you are able to transmit it, whether, you know, we like it or not. Again, the best things that we can do is keep it dormant in our system. Let's see. Can you get HSV2 orally when you already have HSV1 orally? Yeah, unfortunately, you can get both orally, both genitally, whatever combination is going on, you can, you can get it. I don't have HSV2, but my boyfriend does. What are some signs I, I could be getting first outbreak? Um, if you're feeling run down, like you're feeling like you're getting a cold or the strep throat or the flu or COVID for that matter, I don't know. Um, when you just feel run down and sick, swollen lymph nodes, maybe um, your groin is swollen, um, like just Armageddon feeling of your vagina. Um, and then of course, if you see blisters, but if you start feeling sick or run down, or, you know, that would be a really good sign. Also the pain associated with it, like the actual nerve pain for each blister is extremely painful. Um, so that kind of starts. Um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of some symptoms. Um, any other questions you guys? Everyone having a good week? I'm having a good week. It's like flying by. I can't believe it's um, Tuesday already. All right, cool. I will see you all soon tomorrow. If you haven't registered for the retreat, go register. Oh my gosh. I'm, we're going to have so much fun. So much fun. July 30, 31st, and August 1st. It's going to be thebomb.com. All right, I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.